The low pressure system is located downstream of the flow control valves. The pressure in this system is slightly above the atmospheric pressure and much variable. The system contains flow meters, vaporizers and its mounting devices, hypoxia prevention safety devices that automatically regulates flow of oxygen and nitrous oxide, unidirectional valves, pressure relief devices, and common gas outlet. After the gases passes through the flow control valve of the intermediate pressure system, the gas is directed into the flow meters. Flow meters, also known as flow indicators, flow tubes or rotometers indicate the rate of flow of a gas passing through them. They may be mechanical or electronic. Electronic flow meters usually have a representation of a mechanical flow meter on a screen or a number representing the flow. Flow meter is an assembly of different parts including the tube, its indicator, and the stop. The tube, known as the Thorpe tube, is contained in a chromium-plated metal casing protected by a plastic window. It is inscribed with numbers that correspond to gas flow rates. The backplate of the flow meter is luminous to allow for easy visualization. The tube is also coated with anti-static material to prevent the indicator from sticking to it. The indicator, made up of aluminum, is either a float or bobbin type. Depending on the shape and the design, bobbin type can be either rotating or non-rotating. As the valve is opened, gas flows into the tube, and the float rises within the tube until the gravitational force acting on the float is balanced by the force of gas entering the bottom of the tube. The more gas that is allowed to enter the tube, the higher the float rises within the tube. Gas passing between the float and the walls of the tube exits from the top of the flow meter and is delivered to the vaporizer or fresh gas outlet. Bobbin flow meters should be read from the top of the bobbin while ball float types should be read from the middle of the ball. The stop, located on the top of the flow meter, prevents the indicator from plugging the outlet of the flow meter and rising to the point it cannot be seen. The other one located on the bottom of the tube prevents the indicator from falling into the inlet. There are two types of flow meters depending on the size design of the orifice. They are variable orifice flow meters and fixed orifice flow meters. Orifice or the annulus is the area between the outside of the bobbin and the inside of the gas. In fixed orifice flow meters, the pressure across the flow meter varies as the flow rate changes whilst the pressure is constant in variable orifice flow meters. Variable orifice synonymously known as rotometers are the type used in modern machine. They are glass tubes with slightly smaller cross section on bottom than the top. They are designed as singer or double taper for anesthesia machine. Single taper have gradual increase in diameter from bottom to top and are used when there are different tubes for high and low flows. Dual taper have two different taper inside the same tube where the opening gradually increases from bottom to 1 liter per minute for low flow and then increases more rapidly above 1 liter per minute for high flow. So one dual taper tube can be used for both high and low flow. Flow meters adjust the proportions of medical gases received by the anesthesia machine as well as the total gas flows delivered to the patient circuit. When the flow control valve is opened, the gas enters at the bottom and flows up the tube elevating the indicator. The indicator floats freely at a point where the downward force on it by gravity equals the upward force caused by gas molecules hitting the bottom of the indicator. As the gas flow increases, the number of molecules hitting the indicator increases. Hence the indicator rises as the force acting on it from the flow of gas is more than that of gravity. 
As the indicator rises up the tube, the gap around the bobbin increases which allows more and more gas to flow around it. Flow is a volume or amount of a fluid, gas or liquid passing a set point per unit time. It is usually measured in liters per minute. Pressure difference is the driving force that make fluid to flow. As the fluid flows through the tube, there is a resistance between the fluid and the vessel wall that opposes the flow. This relationship is like Ohm's law where flow is determined by pressure difference between the two ends of the tube and resistance. Resistance is further dependent on viscosity of the fluid, length of the tube and the radius or diameter of the tube. This relationship is explained by hagen poiseuille's equation. Fluid flow can be either laminar or turbulent. Laminar flow is the movement of fluid particles along well-defined paths or streamlines, where all the streamlines are straight and parallel. Viscosity is the determining factor for laminar flow. Turbulent flow is defined as the flow in which the fluid particles move in a zigzag way. It is often present where there is a sharp bend or some other irregularity which may cause local increase in velocity. Density is the determining factor for turbulent flow. The Reynolds number is a dimensionless number that represents the ratio of the inertial force and the viscous force of a fluid. It determines whether the flow of the fluid will be laminar or turbulent. A low Reynolds number of less than 2000 indicates laminar flow, while a high Reynolds number of 2000 and more signifies turbulent flow. The rate of flow through the flowmeter tube depends on the pressure drop across the tube. Weight of float or cross-sectional area. Size of annular orifice and the physical properties of the gas. As the bobbin rises, there is an increase in the area of the annular orifice. This reduces the resistance to the flow resulting in increased flow. Applying Reynolds formula, the increased flow leads to increase in turbulence of the flow. It should also be noted that since the flows are turbulent at higher flow rates, density of the gas is important. At lower flow rate, the Reynolds number is low and the flow is laminar and viscosity plays an important role in determining flow. Graham's law for turbulent flow states that the flow rate is directly proportional to square root of pressure gradient on either side of the tube and inversely proportional to square root of density of the fluid. Flow meter are calibrated in liters per min. For flows less than 1 liter per minute, milliliter or decimal fractions of a liter per minute with a zero before the decimal point is used. They are calibrated at atmospheric pressure and room temperature based on physical properties of individual gases. Changes in temperature and pressure affect density and viscosity of gas and affect flow meter accuracy. At low flow rate when the flow is laminar, Hagen Poiseuille's law applies where flow is directly proportional to the pressure difference between the two ends of the tube. As flow changes from laminar to turbulent within the flow meter, the flow becomes proportional to the square root of pressure and hence the graduations on the flow meters are not uniform. There may be one or two rotometers for each gas. Single flow meter layout is the safest but less precise for low flows. If two are present for any gas, the first permits accurate measurement of low flows, usually up to 1 liter per minute and the other, of flows up to 10 to 12 liters per minute. In such a case, the tubes may be arranged either in parallel or in series. In parallel arrangement, two flow indicator assemblies with a flow control valve and control knob for each assembly is used. The total flow of the gas to the common manifold is the sum of the flows on both flow indicators. It is not presently available because of accidental use of a low flow oxygen flow indicator when a high flow is intended. Series arrangement has one flow control valve for the two flow indicator tubes. Gas from the flow control valve first passes through a tube calibrated up to 1 liter per minute, 
then passes to a second tube that is calibrated for higher flows. Total flow is not the sum of the two tubes but the one shown in the higher flow tube. Series arrangement increase accuracy at all flow rates. The oxygen flowmeter is positioned on the right side or most distally of the rotometer bank, downstream from the other flowmeters and closest to the common gas outlet. In the event of a leak in one of the other flowmeter tubes, this position is the one least likely to result in a hypoxic mixture. In A and B, a hypoxic mixture can result because a substantial portion of oxygen flow passes through the leak, and all nitrous oxide is directed to the common gas outlet. The configuration in C and D has oxygen located downstream which prevents hypoxic mixture in gas outlet. However, a leak in the oxygen flowmeter tube can cause a hypoxic mixture, even when oxygen is located in the downstream position. Changes in temperature and pressure alter both viscosity and density of gases, thereby affecting accuracy of the indicator on the flowmeters. Temperature effects are slight and do not cause significant changes. When the anesthesia machines are used at high altitudes, since the density of the gases decreases, when higher flows are set in the flow meters, actual flow of gases will be higher than the set flows, as flow is inversely proportional to the square root of density as per Graham's law discussed earlier. The opposite will occur under hyperbaric conditions. In machines without an outlet check valve, if pressure at the common gas outlet increases, this is transmitted back to the flow meters. Compressing the gas above the float. Pressure above the indicator rises forcing the float down, causing the flow meter to be read lower than the actual gas flow rate. Static electricity causes the float to stick to the side of the tube causing reading inaccuracy. These electrostatic charges are negligible as long as the float rotates freely. The float may adhere to the stop at the top of the tube even if no gas is flowing. The float may disappear from view if the float is broken. There are systems designed to protect against the delivery of hypoxic mixture at the flowmeter level. Machine safety standards require mandatory minimum oxygen flow of 50 to 250 milliliters per minute before other gas will flow. Some machines activate an alarm if oxygen flow falls below a certain limit. In modern anesthesia machines, nitrous oxide and oxygen flow controls are physically interlinked so that a fresh gas mixture containing at least 25% oxygen is delivered at the flow meters when only nitrous oxide and oxygen are used. Datex Omeda uses a mechanical linkage called Link 25. North American Drager machine has pneumatic interlink called Sensitive Oxygen Ratio Controller. The Link 25 system operates with two control knobs, one for nitrous oxide and the other for oxygen, connected by a chain. The nitrous oxide knob has a gear with 14 teeth, while the oxygen knob has a gear with 28 teeth. For every two turns of the nitrous oxide knob, the oxygen knob completes one rotation due to the gear size difference. This design allows independent adjustment of each knob while ensuring a minimum oxygen to nitrous oxide ratio of 1 to 3. If the nitrous oxide flow exceeds 75%, the oxygen knob automatically adjusts to increase oxygen flow, maintaining a 25% oxygen concentration. Similarly, a significant decrease in oxygen flow results in a proportional reduction in nitrous oxide flow. The sensitive oxygen ratio controller is a pneumatic master and slave system designed to maintain a minimum 25% oxygen concentration. It consists of an oxygen chamber or master control, a nitrous oxide chamber, and a nitrous oxide slave control valve, all connected by a movable horizontal shaft. Oxygen and nitrous oxide flow into the system via flow meters with resistors creating back pressures toward the chambers. 
These pressures affect rubber diaphragms attached to the horizontal shaft. The shaft's movement regulates the nitrous oxide slave control valve, controlling the flow of nitrous oxide through its flow control valve. In the lower diagram, when the back pressure on the oxygen diaphragm exceeds that of nitrous oxide, the shaft moves left, opening the nitrous oxide valve. In contrast, insufficient oxygen back pressure closes the nitrous oxide valve in the upper diagram. Machines equipped with proportioning systems can still deliver a hypoxic mixture under the following conditions. Wrong supply gas in oxygen pipeline or cylinder. Defective pneumatic or mechanical components. Leaks downstream of flow control valves. Inert gas administration like helium and carbon dioxide. Proportioning systems generally link only nitrous oxide and oxygen. So use of an oxygen analyzer is mandatory if the operator uses a third inert gas. Unidirectional check valve is present on some machines between the vaporizers and common gas outlet upstream of where oxygen flush flow joins the fresh gas flow. The functioning of check valve is as same as the one used in hangar yoke check valve of high pressure system discussed earlier. Positive pressure ventilation and the use of oxygen flush can cause back flow of the gas to the vaporizers and flow meters. This back flow can cause pumping effect and if not prevented could cause increased vaporizer output. Pressure increase can also cause inaccurate flow indicator readings. The purpose of the outlet check valve is to prevent reverse gas flow. Newer machines like Draeger are equipped with vaporizers that incorporate a baffle system and specially designed manifold to prevent pumping effect, making an outlet check valve unnecessary. The pressure relief valve is located on the back bar of the machine, downstream of the vaporizers or near the common gas outlet. Its purpose is to prevent high pressure from moving into the machine or from the machine to the patient. It is also known as a pop-off valve and operates through a spring-loaded mechanism attached to a disc, which closes the valve below the set pressure. As the pressure within the system increases, the spring is pushed upward, releasing the excess gas. Typically, the pressure relief valve opens at 35 kPa or 5 psi. The vaporizer mounting device is between a flow meter and a common gas outlet. It is permanently mounted. Vaporizers and the flow meters are connected to each other and then bolted with back bar. Common gas outlet receives all gases and vapors from the machine and delivers the mixture to the breathing system. This connects to the anesthetic breathing circuit to deliver the combined product of gases and anesthetic agent to the patient. The pressure delivered at outlet is 5 to 8 psi.